Hi there guys, Post Protosis here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine series. Today I'm going to break down the light setup for this epic scene as it's much more complex than others from my video where I used only one source of light. This tutorial will be useful not only for automotive enthusiasts starting to explore Unreal Engine but also for people who would like to learn some lighting tips in Unreal which I will show in this tutorial. So stick around and with a couple of hours of practicing you'll be able to do that too. But before we get into it, make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you would like to get more tips about Unreal Engine and post-production. Without further ado, let's slide this scene. Here I have the environment I have recreated inspired by McLaren 750S commercial according to the reference. It's done with the simple shapes like cubes, planes and with mega scan materials from Bridge and some assets from free Unreal Engine asset packs. Creating this scene was easy as environment is very simple. The scene looks good in Lumen and Path Tracing and I would say almost identical. If it looks good in Lumen, then it means in Path Tracing it will too. I like to keep my project organized, so I have here all sorted by folders, geometry, props and lights. You can easily find what you need or hide it in groups. Right now I will delete all the lights and post-processing volume from the scene and we will create the setup from a scratch. First, I add new post-processing volume to the scene and set it to unbound, so it will affect the whole level, but not only the box area. After that, I set up exposure meter in mode to manual, as I don't want exposure to adjust automatically all the time and increase exposure compensation to brighten the scene. Change bloom mode to convolution. I already mentioned why I used that in my previous videos. Now I disable lens flares. It creates flickering on renders, sometimes not looking good and may ruin the shot. I use them only when I'm confident that the result will look great. Now let's introduce our first light into the scene. It will be our ceiling light. For this purpose I used mostly rec lights as they work as the soft boxes. I adjust its position over the top of the car. Already we have something. Let's adjust exposure in post-processing volume. I think 12 is good for current setup. We need to make light softer and fill the environment. To achieve that we need to change the size of the light. It works just like in real world. The bigger the size of the light source, the softer the light is, just like here when I'm using my softbox, which is actually the monitor. I just set up the temperature I like. That's that simple. You can increase rec light size by changing width and height in actor details tab. After I slightly adjust boundary angle to decrease side spill. Let's change the color to something that better suits our mood of the scene. Make it cooler. Right now I would like to get better results of light reflections on the windscreen, so we need to turn ray tracing for translucent objects in our post-processing volume. Go to Details tab and search for Translucency, enable Type checkbox and change it from Raster to Ray Tracing. Now if I move our source of light it will have proper reflections on the glass. Now let's add more lights to light our scene better. Holding Alt on my keyboard, I'm dragging the light source and duplicating it at the same time. Check in the result and create one more ceiling light. Looks fine for now, we will adjust their position later. Following the reference, right now I want to create red tint from the car rear lights. Once again, I duplicate already existing light, change its size and actor details, place it near rear end of the car and change color to red and slightly lower in intensity. It's 
always good to look for the references when you are creating the scene like that, it really helps to understand how the light works and how to approach it into your environment. Next step is adjusting some global light that will make the whole scene less dark. Again, I just duplicate ceiling light, increase its size and change intensity to add some soft light to the whole construction from the right side so it fills the scene with a soft light. Now I will adjust camera position to the reference picture. And start adjusting lights position to make accents to our object lines and highlight the geometry, showing it in the best way possible. For example, with one of the ceiling lights I want to split windshield in half, so it can create checkerboard pattern playing with dark and light parts. Also, I am working on making nice, flat reflection on the car's bonnet. Try avoiding multiple complex reflections from the multiple sources of light. It really makes it harder to understand the geometry of the car or the object you light and just makes the picture look dirty and unprofessional. Looks good to me, but we are not finished yet. Here starts the most interesting part, light channels, which is the magic of lighting in 3D. Unreal Engine has three light channels for each mesh and source of light, which means you can create lights that are not affecting certain objects and don't drop shadows. So you can create Unreal Light scenarios which will look really epic. For example, I want to emphasize right side of the car, but I don't want to create additional shadow and ruin the shape that ceiling light is painting right now. I create the light, adjust its position and size, place it where I want. Now I select my car model and look for channels and enable channel 1 checkbox. So now my car model will receive light from two channels. I select my light and enable checkbox for channel 1 and disable channel 0. So my construction paths won't be lit by this light. By default all objects in Unreal Engine are using channel 0, so light affects all of them in the scene. If you add model to separate channel and tell the light to affect only one channel, like in my example, you will get this result. Now I duplicate the light to emphasize the back of the car and adjust all the lights position right now and enabling light channel 1 for car wheels too so they will also receive the light from this light source. Let's make a conclusion for this scene. Try to avoid multiple shape reflection on geometry. Keep them plain and simple in order to make accents on shapes. Use light channels to make your object pop out without affecting other parts of the scene. And the most important, practice by recreating some light scenarios from your favorite movies or commercial. And here is the final result. And this is it for today, hope you enjoyed it, if you liked it don't forget to put a thumb up for this video and see you in the next one.